Hello students. Today this video is prepared to understand the basics of design of footing. Well, footing are the structural members used to support columns and walls and to transmit and distribute their loads to the soil in such a way that the load bearing capacity of the soil is not exceeded. Excessive settlement, differential settlement or rotation are prevented and adequate safety against overturning or sliding is maintained. To satisfy all these points, we need to design the footing. Well, types of footings. So, first we will see the types of isolated footing. Based on shape, footings can be divided into three types, pad footing, slope footing and step footing. So the first diagram is this is for pad footing in which the thickness of the footing is uniform. In the second type which is slope footing also called as trapezoidal footing in which the depth is more near the face of the column and that decreases towards the edges. And in step footing the steps are provided in where again the depth is more near the column face and which is reduced towards the outer face. Since the depth of the footing is governed by check for shear and bending moment criteria. So maximum shear is at the face of the column and also maximum bending moment is at the face of the column and hence it needs more depth and hence we got this two types slow footing and step footing. So as compared to pad footing, slow footing is always economical. Based on the analysis, there are two types actually loaded footing and moment resisting footing. In actual loaded footing, the load is transferred along the centroid of the footing. Whereas in moment resisting footing, the footings are subjected to moments. Now in this diagram, since the column is placed somewhere at eccentricity with x axis as well as y axis, so obviously we have here the moment mx and moment my. Now because of these two moments, the footing is subjected to uh, different pressures. So like here, see this height this is the pressure diagram. So this is the P max. We can say this is the P1, then this is P2, P3 and P4. So according all four corners are subjected to four different pressures. So this is called as the footing subjected to biaxial bending. Now when we come to combined footing, so in combined footing, combined footing is provided for two or more columns. Now this is the diagram of one combined footing. Again there are two types of combined uh, footing uh, for two columns. It is the slab type of combined footing and slab and beam type of combined footing. This is the one more type which is called as strap footing in which the two isolated footings are connected by a stripe beam. Particularly such type of footings are provided when the boundary, the, the boundary of the plot is very much near to the footing and the projection of the footing is not allowed beyond the boundary line. This is one more type which is called as mat foundation in which number of columns for all the columns of the building are provided with one uniform uh, footing which is called as mat. So mat foundation may be provided by beams or may not be provided by beams. It is also called as rough foundation. Well, since for the design of footing to determine area of the footing, safe bearing capacity is very important. And what is the safe bearing capacity? So it is the capacity of the soil to bear the load before failure. Now, before starting any design of footing, it is necessary to consider the safe bearing capacity of the strata. So some guidelines are given by National Building Code in which for rocks and cohesionless soil, so for rocks, so different values of bearing capacity are given according to different types. And for cohesionless soil, for example, gravel, sand and gravel, the value is 440 km per square for coarse sand and compact and dry 440, medium sand and compact and dry 245, fine sand 150, like all the remaining values are given. So this is for cohesionless soil. The next table is for cohesive soil in which soft shale, hard and or stiff clay in deep bed 440 and likewise for different uh, categories of the soils, the bearing capacity, uh, the values of bearing capacities are given here. Well, distribution of soil pressure. So here to understand that how the pressure acts on the footing. Since when the footing 
when the column load p is applied on the centroid of the footing a uniform pressure is assumed to develop on the soil surface below the footing area which is quite ideal condition however the actual distribution of the soil is not uniform but depends on many factors especially the composition of the soil and the degree of flexibility of the footing for example if the footing is supported by a cohesion less soil then this is the pressure ball convex shape this is the concave shape in which the pressure is minimum at the center and maximum towards the outer edges and here is the uniform pressure so ideal condition we consider this one but when type of the soil is different cohesion less or cohesive then pattern of the upward soil pressure changes well while designing the footing it is necessary to understand how the pressure acts so if we consider here that there is a uniform pressure which is acting from soil to the foundation then this portion which is which acts as a cantilever and it is subjected to uniform force and these are the tension cracks which appears at the soffit of the footing and hence it is necessary to provide main reinforcement along this direction at the bottom of the footing now what are the design considerations of footing so first one footing must be designed to carry the column loads and transmit them to the soil safely while satisfying the cold limitations the area of the footing based on the allowable bearing soil capacity is to be calculated then it is necessary to check the footing for two way shear also it is called as punching shear then it is necessary to calculate bending moment about x axis about y axis and then accordingly we have to calculate the area of steel for x axis bending moment as well as y axis bending moment then it is necessary to check the footing for one way shear once for about x axis and second time about y axis and the last one is check for bearing pressure well two way shear it is also called as punching shear and this is the failure pattern of the two way shear the critical section for two way shear is considered at distance d by 2 where d is the effective depth of the footing d by 2 from the face of the column so along the periphery of the column it is necessary to consider the critical section for two way shear now here is the diagram diagram is quite complicated but till we will try to understand that this first diagram is given for two way shear now this is the critical section for two way shear and this is the column in the size of the column is provided like this the depth of the column is capital d and this is the width of the column b now since the critical section is considered at distance d dy by 2 and this is dy by 2 so it is d by 2 distance so accordingly the critical section this is the length of the critical section capital d plus dy and this is b plus dy so this is the section which raises the two way shear now this perimeter multiplied depth of the footing that means dy that gives you area resisting two way shear similarly it is necessary to check the footing for one way shear also so one way shear is considered at distance dx about x axis and at distance dy about y axis so these are the two critical sections and here we have to consider this section the depth of the footing for one way shear on for x direction as well as for y direction tensile reinforcement so some guidelines are given in the clause 34.3.1 page 65 of is 456 total tensile reinforcement shall be distributed across the corresponding resisting section as given below in one way reinforced footing one way reinforced footing means it is just like for uh, continuous wall footing the reinforcement extending in each direction shall be distributed uniformly across the full width of the footing and in two way reinforced square footing the reinforcement extending in each direction shall be distributed uniformly across the full width of the footing that means all the bars are distributed at uniform spacing now this is the case where the footing is not square footing is rectangular so in two way reinforced rectangular footing the reinforcement in the long direction shall be distributed uniformly across the full width of footing so see this is the diagram now across the full width that means these are the bars which we can provide across the full width okay well but while distributing the bars along the along this direction along the short span it is necessary to divide these bars into two bands central band and end band 
and the distribution of the reinforcement is according to this equation. So, where reinforcement in the central band width divided by total reinforcement in the short direction, it is equal to 2 divided by beta plus 1, where beta is the ratio of the long side to the short side of the footing. Well, so here this is the central band. So, spacing is less in the central band and spacing is more in the end band. Now, check for bearing pressure at the column base. So, here we will consider two areas, area A1 and A2. So, A1 is the area uh, at the bottom and A2 is the area which is at top. So, the compressive stress in concrete at the base of the column shall be considered as being transferred by bearing to the top of the footing. The bearing pressure on the loaded area shall not exceed the permissible bearing stress in direct compression multiplied by square root of A1 divided by A2, but not greater than 2. Now let us try to understand what is this A1 and A2. A1 it is the supporting area for bearing of footing which is in slope or in step footing may be taken as the area of the lower base of the largest frustum of a pyramid. So this is the pyramid which is considered here or cone contained wholly within the footing and having its upper base. The area actually loaded and having side slope of one vertical to the two horizontal. So this is one vertical to the two horizontal and A2 is the loaded area at the column base that means at the top. So this is A2 and this is A1. So these two areas it is A1 divided by A2 and square root of it we have to multiply to the permissible bearing stress. Well, what are the earlier cases we saw? These are the actually loaded footings. Now, let us see moment resisting footings also called as eccentric footings. Now, this is the diagram of uniform pressure distribution. So, if the column is subjected to moment, so that moment get transferred to the footing. So, if we shift the column towards the opposite side of the direction of the moment, so obviously, that moment will get counterbalance hence and we get the uniform pressure here. So here is the eccentricity which is shown here. So column is shifted towards the right hand side to counterbalance the moment and we, got, we get here uniform pressure diagram. So the effect of moment is nullified here. In the second case, the uniformly varying pressure. Now the column is exactly at the center but it is subjected to moment. Now since it is subjected to moment. So, obviously, because of the moment acting towards this side, this pressure increase and this pressure decrease. So, it is the varying pressure diagram. So, we have to calculate the moment, the shear force according to this upward pressure diagram. Now, while doing detailing of the reinforcement in the footing, we have to take care of two parameters. One is confining reinforcement and second one is the extension of the column bar into the footing. When the column terminates into a footing, the spatial confining reinforcement shall extend at least 300 mm. So, this distance is 300 mm into the footing. During severe shaking, a plastic hinge may form at the bottom of a column that terminates into a footing. Hence, spatial confining reinforcement of the column must be extended to the footing. So, that is why this spatial confining reinforcement is required. And the second point is this bar must be extended into footing for distance at least 300 mm. Now, now let us see the detailing of the reinforcement in the uh, isolated trapezoidal footing. So, here is the main reinforcement which is provided at bottom is the two-way reinforcement. So, dots are also given here. Now, this is the distance minimum 300. The column bars are extended in the footing. Now, at top it is the offset which is given here. Minimum 50 mm offset is required. Now, in this diagram 75 mm offset is provided. This offset is required to rest the uh, form work of the column. Now, these are the links as per the confining reinforcement. Now, DF, capital D suffix F is the overall depth and small d is the, the uh, depth at the edge of the footing. Well, these are the four sloping edges which are shown here and this is the reinforcement. So, BF is the width of the footing and LF is the length of the footing. The next detailing is, is of pad footing, but it is not only pad, it is a rough foundation or mat foundation. So, this is the part of the mat foundation, but since the column is subjected to heavy loads and the thickness of the raft is not sufficient, so it is necessary to increase the thickness of the raft near the vicinity of the column and in the remaining portion, the uh, thickness of the raft can be reduced. So, this is the detailing of the 
rough foundation along with the pad foundation which are merged into the rough foundation okay yes thank you students this this part covers only the basics now in the next presentation we will go for actual design of the foundation thank you